Hello everybody, this is John Wu from Tenic Technologies. Building a measurement system with LabVIEW should be as easy and fun like building with LEGO bricks. That's why we've made our product to be simple, consistent, and user-friendly. That's right. Tenant eMotion is so easy to use, we guarantee your motors working from LabVIEW in 30 minutes or less. So let's dive in and see if our product can really live up to the props. Okay, so here's my motor setup. Over here, I'm using a simple TB6600 stepper motor driver as a demonstration. You could very well use any other stepper or servo motor driver, such as Yaskawa, Delta, Mitsubishi, or Panasonic, as long as they can accept pulse commands. Now, this here is our 4-axis motion controller, the Tenant eMotion. It uses Ethernet connection to communicate with your PC that's running LabVIEW. But more on the software side later. Let me show you how to hook up the signals from the Tenant eMotion to the stepper motor driver. On most motor drivers that take pulse commands, you should be able to connect a step signal and a direction signal. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for connecting the control signals to the stepper motor driver. Now, if you have other feedback devices such as limit switches and encoders for feedback, you can also hook these up to the Tenant eMotion controller. Now, all that's left is powering up the controller and also connecting my Ethernet cable. All right, looks like my control signals are connected. My power is connected, my ethernet is connected. Let's jump over to the software side to see if we could do some basic tests and perhaps do some programming with LabVIEW. Okay, so over here I have a fresh LabVIEW setup. Here on my computer, I've installed LabVIEW 2023. It is the newest version of LabVIEW and our tenant eMotion software is compatible with LabVIEW versions of 2015 and up. From our website, you're going to need to download two files. One is what we call the WPC Device Manager. It's our basic setup and configuration tool. And the second file, which is a VI package file, this is the WPC Device Drivers. These are the collection of LabVIEW VIs that are used to control the Tenant eMotion controller. All right, so the first thing that we do if we want to make sure all the connections are correct, let's open up the WPC Device Manager. Okay, it's gonna scan the local network to see if there's a tenant eMotion controller on the local network. All right, now that it's found a eMotion controller with the IP 192.168.1.110. Here are all the basic maintenance functions that we can use to change this IP, change this firmware, and so forth. Over here is a test panel function for our motion controller. Now, if you remember from our hardware connection, we connected our stepper motor driver to the Axis 1 connection. Now, if I go ahead and click on the Move panel, over here, I'm going to have a few sets of operation. And for a basic check of if the motors are wired correctly, let's just do a velocity mode move. Currently, our velocity is 10,000 steps per second, and I'll press run. You'll see that the motor has begun to spin, and that's quite expected. So if I say stop, and if I make the velocity in a negative 10,000, you'll notice that ooh, the motor goes backwards. Okay, so what's really cool about a motion control is that you can define the acceleration and deceleration parameters of this move. So it's almost like if you're driving a car. When you accelerate, you can decide if you want to accelerate really fast or gradually. So let's do a little demo. If I have a slow acceleration or deceleration, let's see what happens to the motor. You'll see that it kind of accelerates really slowly in the beginning as the speed increases to the set speed of 10,000 steps. It cruises on that velocity, and if I press stop, it's going to decelerate like you, you know, you're, you're putting a your foot on the brakes and slowly stopping to the traffic light. <laughs> That's the analogy that I would use. Okay, so let's try another thing. Let's say if we wanted to do a move based on a certain number of counts, 
we can do a relative position move. And because I know that one circle of this motor is going to be 6400 counts, I can do a basic test, 6400. Let's go in this direction. What I expect is that the motor is going to turn one exact revolution. Press run. And it's going to turn and eventually reach a stop. So that's pretty good. Now if I wanted to do 10 revolutions, I just increase that by a factor of 10. And let's have this run a little faster this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, it's pretty precise. All right, now that we know that the hardware is all set up and ready to run, let's figure out how to run the Tenet eMotion from LabVIEW. We do that by installing the VI package file that's provided by our controller. And so let's double click on this. All right. Okay, so the VI package manager, it helps install the VI package file with your LabVIEW version. And depending on if you have different versions of LabVIEW in your computer, that's gonna help you manage that. So let's go ahead and press install and let it, let it do its thing. All right, get a drink of water, have a cup of coffee, come back after five to 10 minutes. The speed will depend on the processor of your computer. Okay, looks like we're finished. I press done. All right, now let's go ahead and show the VIs within the LabVIEW environment. Okay, so let's go ahead and explore the palette set. Here are all the motion associated VIs. Okay, now another thing is that we provide examples for every function on our eMotion hardware. So let's show some examples. If we're in LabVIEW, we can open up the Find Examples tool. When we have the WPC device drivers installed, we can use directory structure, walk down to WPC systems, open that up again. And within the examples folder, we have motion. And here you'll see every available example for all the available functions. Circular move, axis move, circle on, find home, find index, find limit, position blending, etc. So let's start with a WPC motion one axis move. That's one of the most basic examples that we can use. Now that we have this example VI opened up, you'll see that most of the configurations are exactly the same as what we had on the test panel. So let's just replicate those settings. We have axis one, and let's say if we said, again, 6400, velocities, sessions, let's just leave those as the same, toggle to relative position, and let's press run, see what happens. You'll see that LabVIEW has issued the command and the motor has turn exactly one revolution. Okay, so let's try that again with, let's say, 10 revolutions, uh, 64,000, and let's press run. You'll see that the logical position is ever increasing as our motor is turning. And that's a good indication of where the motor position is at all times. If we check out the code behind the example program, You'll see that it's rather straightforward with data flow, LabVIEW best practices and paradigms. You can use state machines, you could use QMH, QMeshage handlers. Depending on your comfort level with LabVIEW and your LabVIEW expertise, you can then use these example programs and VIs to assemble your test and measurement application with LabVIEW. And of course, we also offer Express VIs with our LabVIEW API so that you can get up and running with your test and measurement system in the shortest amount of time. Okay, I hope this video gives you a good idea of how to get started with the Tenant eMotion Control. For motion control in LabVIEW, getting the hardware and software interfaces set up correctly is really half the battle. 
The Tenant eMotion allows you to add motion control to LabVIEW in 30 minutes or less, guaranteed. So for more information, check out our website linked below. And if you found this video helpful, please share and subscribe. See you guys. Bye-bye.